So we went to Total Wine the other day. Probably not the other day. We went to Total Wine yesterday. We got more than three wines. I grabbed one of my favorite red wine and then I grabbed some Rieslings because I want to show off what a good sweet wine should be. And sweet wine, for those of you who doesn't know me, probably majority of you, I hate sweet wine because they don't exist. Straight up, they don't exist. The definition of sweet wine that we particularly are aware of is wine that does not have much tannins. Wines that are flavorful and fruity. That is not equal to wines that are sweet. For example, Riesling is the only thing I can recommend when anyone asks me which sweet wine do you recommend. Don't even think about anything other than Riesling because they're all manipulated. They're, they're a great drink, but I don't consider them as a pure wine, if you know what I mean. So today, we have three wines. These three, as you can see, nice close-up bureau sooner or later. It's already been poured. I don't know which one's which. It's been labeled with this doggy thing that Jenna put. Not me. I don't know any of them. I haven't seen it. I didn't taste them. Nothing. Why don't we begin with the intro real quick? We'll be right back, alright? So without further ado, let's taste these beautiful wines, shall we? So I'm gonna go with A, B, and C, and I'm gonna need a pen and a notebook, and I'll be right back with it. A, B, and C. Wine number, number, wow. Wine letter A. Hmm. Apricot, pineapple, stone fruits, very lovely. It's pretty short. So after that initial smell of stone fruits, it kind of disappears. But there's that very nice hint of minerality, like hidden behind, as like an aroma. Wine B. Really similar to the previous one, apricot and pineapple right away. But there's a hint, like a hint of like um, eucalyptus. I can't even spell that correctly to write, write it down. It's like, it's like eucalyptus, minty, slightly less minerally, but it's a little bit more like floral characteristic compared to the last one. Overall, pretty darn good. And lastly, wine C. I get that very nice characteristics of petrol, gasoline. You guys are probably gonna look at me funny, like, well, how is gasoline good? I'm like, because that's the actually exact characteristic what you smell from a really, really high quality Riesling. A little bit of green, apple. Uh, I will say it's a little more peachy than apricots. So slightly less fruity, a little less stony, but it's about, but it's definitely slightly longer. I'll say medium on the, the length of the nose. It's a little more deep, it's a little more complex. Why don't we taste them? Wine A. Peachy, little pineapple, little citrusy. I'll say medium minus length in terms of how long the flavor lasts in my mouth. Quite sugary, still pretty darn good. How about second wine? Mmm. This one is much more crisper, citrus crisper, energy drink kind of crisp. So it's citrusy, a little bit more green, I think. Yeah, and then on the nose, I said I get a lot of a hint of eucalyptus and mint, and I'm tasting that in the... I think this might have got touch of oak. I'm not 100% sure. I doubt it, but for whatever reason, in my head and back of my tongue, it's saying this has seen oak. To describe it, it tastes like 95% Riesling and 5% Chardonnay. That's what this tastes like to me. I get that. I don't know why. I know all these are 100% Riesling, but on the back of my tongue, I taste like 5% of Chardonnay, and I get that very California backbone. Let's see, how about this one? This is my favorite on the nose. Let's see how it tastes. Definitely peach, definitely apricot. It's slight ungenerous. Uh, I think if this is a German wine, it's slightly ungenerous. I, I get a lot of green asparagus, like unripeness going on. I think I'm more sensitive to that green characteristic than probably anyone around me who tastes wine and do tasting, because I always get green notes more than anyone else. This green, you might not get it at all, but I get it just a hint. But it's not unpleasant. I just, I just think it's slightly unripe, ever like just a touch. Tasting-wise, I think it's beautiful. 
in terms of figuring out which one is which, to be honest, I think it's one of the most difficult one I ever had. Like not just on this channel, but like in my personal life and my other tastings I've done in the past. Exception of wine B right here. These two are very, very similar in terms of palette, but slightly different in the nose. This is a $20 bottle. This was $7, this was $9. If I'm tasting this and you're telling me there's $20 wine here, there isn't a $20 wine. Exception of this. I can definitely tell this is cheap. Then. Now, if this is German recently, I'm gonna throw this up because I'm very disappointed. <laughs> so if I go towards WSCT level three route, which I take all of my personal bias out of my head, I go what, what is taste and based on the score I've given, and then if the score reflects the price, the middle one, Shout to Shane Michelle, $7. This is Germany, and this is Kendall Jackson. Correct. Am I correct? Yeah. Wow, so WSCT actually does really work. Oh, hence, by the way, for those who, who don't know, I am pursuing WSCT level three course, and that is why I am doing this channel so I can learn more and have more chance to taste these wines as I pursue my certification. Germany, mm -hmm. Kendall Jackson, mm -hmm. and this. Yep. This is the order. Yep. I took my biased opinion, especially on the nose, away. I went straight on the points based. Because it had the most amount of flaw. The alcohol was a little off. It wasn't balanced. It was well integrated. And I don't know why, it almost tasted like watered down Chardonnay. No, not watered down Chardonnay. Watered down Riesling or Chardonnay with added sugar. Can I recommend this? Probably not. Not even for $7. No bueno. However, this wine. This $10 wine, Kendall Jackson Vintners Reserve Riesling 2019 from Monterey County. This thing tastes like this $20 German Riesling. If I were to give you a recommendation, just go get this. Don't, don't even think about this. When it comes to white wines, I love Rieslings because I think they're a lot more flavorful. They're easier to drink and most people like it because it's on the sweeter side. And I always got this bottle and unfortunately I can no longer recommend this bottle because this $10 Kendall Jackson tastes as good as if not better than the German wine. There is that. That's very, very surprising, isn't it? Wow. I am genuinely surprised because I thought this was Kendall Jackson because they're known for oaking shit. And then that's why I went with that. See? Because I, I was thinking about each vineyard style, not just the wine. I'm a little disappointed on this. This could be a lot better. Especially they're only $2 apart. $2 apart, that's it. $7, $9, $2 apart. But this thing tastes like $15, $20 line Riesling easily, if not more. I'll probably do like a little graphic in this video. There's tiers of German Riesling is, you start with Azale, which tends to be the most sweetest and latest harvest. That's why it has the most sweetness because the later you harvest, the sweeter it gets because the sugar residual grows within the grapes. Often, they let the grapes do a noble rot. It's, it's a wine making technique that a lot of vineyards use to make wine as sweet as possible with short amount of fermentation. Whereas the one below, the Cabinet, Spatzle, and QBA area, I'm pretty sure I'm portraying all those words because I don't speak German. They, they tend to be like off dry style, which are slightly sweet. Overall, the mind-blowing thing about this Rieslings are none of these are considered sweet in terms of our WSET tasting notes. None of these are considered sweet. Some of them are considered off-dry, but none of them are considered sweet. Most of the time, when you are seeking for that sweet wine, you're seeking for a wine that are fruity, that apricot, peachy flavors, not like a sugar sweet. Because in wines, when we say it's sweet, we, we think about amount of sugar in, inside a wine, not the flavor. If the flavor itself is on a sweeter note, such as peach, apricot, pineapples, that kind of stuff, those are not considered sweet for us because I guess that's what they don't want us to think. Overall, do not buy this. I can't recommend this anymore. Just go buy this. This wine, I bought it for what, 960 something at Total Wine? This threw me off. This, this was the only wine that had a petrol gasoline characteristic. It is often a good characteristic that a good Riesling carries. So for that, Kendall Jackson, great job. If you want sweetest out of bunch at a good quality drinking level, go with German Riesling. Don't get the QBAs, don't get, uh, at least get the cabinets and above. So it starts with cabinet, spatzle, and ozle. Ozle being the sweetest, cabinet being the off dry, and spatzle kind of in between. This is definitely sweeter, ever so slightly less sweeter, but it's definitely more my style because it's not over the top sweet. Like I'll be able to pair this with some half a decent amount of food. Whereas this is more like a standalone drink, just to have it for like a dessert drink, something like that. 
with food, this is a little, I think, too sweet to be food wine, whereas this definitely can be. That is my verdict on sweet wine. There is no such thing as sweet wine because we think it's sweet, but according to WSET, it's off dry at most. I disagree sometimes, but if I hear their explanation, it kind of makes sense because you're tasting flavor, not sugar, and those are two different things. It was a great tasting. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope to see you guys soon. Comment, like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell because I think I forgot to mention that last time. And that is all. Thank you guys again. Bye.